Good evening, good Tuesday evening. From Xfinity Center, Maryland 56, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights 51. This is the Big Dog Post Game Show. I'm Wayne Viner, Bruce Bosner, Cordell Woodland. Boy, that was a fist fight to the end, Bruce. Typical old fashioned Big Ten game. It was tough underneath, but at so many, look, 17 for Cowan, 14 for Sticks, 14 for Marcel, Marcel, and that's about it. I mean, that just took care of everything. And uh, what the heck, you know, Sticks, 15 rebounds, 14 points uh, against two big men the entire game. One in, one out, one in, one out. He was just great. I can't. There's not enough superlatives for him. What do you think there, uh, yeah, Cordell? Yeah, uh, Jalen Smith is, you know, I mean, the dude is as consistent as the male. Uh, there's not much you can say about him to keep applauding him. Jalen Smith shows up to work every game. Uh, another big game for Cowan. Everybody's waiting for the turf to show consistency, and I'm starting to believe that this is just who they are. Uh, this is a team that relies on the defensive end to get their offense going. They're not going to live in the 70s and 80s as far as points. They have the two consistent guys that they're going to get points from every game, and that third guy is always the wild card between Morsell, uh, Ayala, and, uh, Wiggins. and Wiggins. And tonight really, it was Morsell. You know what? You need two out of three of them to win a game. We caught a team that really – Played poorly on offense tonight. Yeah. What could the score have been at halftime, Wayne? Well, it could have been much worse. Maryland doesn't score for about nine and a half minutes at the end of the first half. And then Rutgers goes 14 minutes with 11 points in the second half. So it was a battle of attrition. It's almost a double negative. Maryland ends up on the positive side of the double negative because they have their stars are better. Yeah. And they're here. And they're here. And, and when the defense difference. plays, especially the beginning of that with 18 minutes to go in the game all of a sudden the defense shows up for maryland and they create flow and momentum coming from that end to this yeah. end and they look spectacular if they could play defense like that for 40 minutes wow you could really yeah. have something but generally they don't the last two minutes was excruciatingly painful to see who could actually make a shot yeah maryland made so few baskets down the stretch they really won it at the free throw line one they gave me the free throw you know what Normally when I come to a game, I put the game on TiVo, and when I get home, I watch it quickly. You know, I buzz through it. I'm not watching this one. This one would be hard to watch. <laughs> well, you just have the DVR stop every time there's a basket. It'll take you oh about two minutes God. to get through the game. I might go down in the last three minutes, but <laughs> well, you, the, the six-point play almost cost the uh, Terps the game. Well, it, it didn't end up being a six-point play. We can recreate it right here. Let me tackle you for a minute like Cowan did to the defender. They call what used to be called a technical foul. Now yeah. it's a flagrant one. Rutgers goes the other end, but they, Merrill loses a possession. Rutgers only gets the two free throws out of it. And they get the ball and score. And Maryland could have scored. Yep. Yeah. That's why it's a six-point play. But you know what? It's over eight and three. What else can we say? And 17 and four? I think it's 18 and four now. 18 and four? Eight and three is almost unbelievable with the yeah. Big Ten this year. But they've taken care of business at home. And that's the bottom line. Hey. And I want to tell you, if you, you have to be here, I'm sure you can tell on TV, but when it's crunch time, yeah. how much you think these fans help? Oh, yeah, the fans help big time, honestly. that That's really the fuel that filled the, the, the Terps fire right. tonight and, and once you they could, got the bucket. Yeah, you can see in the background here the, the fans cheering for the defense again yeah. as they pretty much get the trunk slammer stop on Rutgers. After that, they should just go to the bus. Just a great win. Every win's a great win in the Big Ten. There's a, it's another quad win. Yeah. It's quad almost one. like quad one. It's almost unbelievable. I think Maryland leads the nation in quad one and wins. And guess what we got Friday night? A qu another quad one yeah. game. Illinois. We'll talk about the Illinois, the fighting Illini, when we come back after this message from Rick Chaklich. We'll be back at Xfinity, happy Xfinity Center, in a moment. Terp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the D.C. Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301-251-2900 
or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. If you've been hurt in a truck crash, call the Jacklers Law Group. We have decades of experience handling truck crashes. We recognize issues unique to trucks, including black box findings and DOT regulations. We find insurance others don't know exists. Some think the only coverage is with the truck, yet we've found millions more insurance with the broker. It's important to collect information, find representation immediately. Truck cases are complex. If you've been hurt in a truck crash, call 855-BIG-DOG-1 right now. So, the top 10 terms. Let's let, let's let Cordell give the news to everybody. <laughs> it might just be for a few minutes, but, but, but who's the top of the Big Ten right now? Right now is Maryland. That's Maryland's right. tied at the top of the Big Ten. Number one, never felt so good. The weather says it's final four weekend. The calendar says it's February, and we're in first place. When Morsell scores 10 points or more, Maryland hasn't lost this year. And what's the home record? 13 and 0 at home this year. We should play every game here. Every game should hey, be. Hey, protect here. your house. Right. Protect your house. That's so, what it's about. Illinois, even though they lost at Iowa on that was Sunday, right? Uh, the one o'clock game, they look pretty good. I mean, Illinois looks legit. They have that that super large center, Kofi Coburn, that got in early foul trouble at College Park. That's going to be a load for sticks to handle. Well, it's going to be a very, very tough win. They're great at home. They've beaten everybody, as far as I know. And uh, I think they're seven and four. They have one more loss in right. Maryland. So they're playing for a tie for first. So, look, are there any easy games, just, really? That, that's what I was going to say is there are no easy games, and really there are no easy matchups for Sticks at this point. He's gone against big body guys all season, especially in Big Ten play, so this will just be another day well, at the you, office. If you look at his numbers, isn't it the other way around? Yeah, that, yeah. That, that Sticks is a guy that there's no easy matchup against him. He can honestly, take you outside, honestly. and at the three, he takes you inside. He rebounds like Gumby. Man. Suddenly, his arm's 20 feet long, and he snaps the rebound Sticks in. is such a game changer for Maryland, whether he has the ball or not, and even on the defensive end, whether he's guarding the yeah. ball or not. His presence is so uh, big for them, man. Before it's, it's we head in for the pressers, there were two dunks here that are going to go on yeah. somebody's all-time poster list. One was Daryl Morsell yeah. finally got one. Yeah. He's come down here and missed. He really yeah. got up. You know, yeah. he has the big, uh, largest vertical leap of anybody at Maryland. It's holding on to the ball. It's a problem. And then Sticks <laughs> follows that Ooh. up with a monster a jam. Stop. And Bruce is going to now demonstrate these. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> Gotta have a tra better get a trampoline in here. Yeah. The only way we can dunk like that is a donut and a cup of coffee. We're not dunking like that. Are, are you more impressed with the tenacity that they finally you, – you, that's why the crowd cheered so much. Yeah. They, they knew this wasn't a great game, but Maryland hung in there. 25 to 20 at halftime. The only time I was worried about this game was with 47-47 because it can go either way. I never thought we wouldn't win until it got to 47-47. There was that one second, and we'll let Cordell wrap this one up, when I can't remember who it was, hit a three from the corner, and then it wasn't a three. At one 49, second, yeah, it was, one. if that was 50 to 49, yeah. we were in trouble. 49 all was a much different game. All right, sum up what you saw here tonight. I saw a resilient Maryland team. This is a team that, they may not be getting the pretty wins that we, you know, want them to get, but these are the wins that that build character. I think come tournament time, Big Ten is is such a dog fight. Every win is not going to be easy, even at home, even at home. So it's just good to see Maryland do whatever it takes to come out on top. And I and I know Coach Turgeon saw a lot that he may not have liked tonight, but I know he likes the scoreboard. Bottom line, that's what matters. Great game, Friday night at Illinois. Men's lacrosse goes to at Richmond on Saturday at noon. At Richmond Saturday at noon. At what CSPN up? Plus, we'll try and get Bruce on that. Yeah. And hey, props to Mason who did a rocking job on ESPN Plus at Jacksonville last night as Florida Gulf Coast. The women's team, I think, is out 23 and two for Florida Gulf awesome. Coast. Awesome, utterly awesome. Mason was was excellent. Check that out on Turp Talk, and you can catch all three of us tomorrow evening on 1300 CBS Are Sports Radio. You producing Radio. tomorrow? All right. And, all right, and that'll do it from Happy Xfinity Center. As Bruce always says, drive safely. Drive safely, everybody. Go Terps.